Well, friends, welcome back to the next episode with some help from my wife. We got the uh, Tough Tex Polycarb corrugated panels up, which there you go. If you're watching, this is what we use. We, we uh, laid them all flat and cut them off the same length before we, we put them up. So the corrugated panels are up. It's the Tough Tex. Uh, went on quite easy. I did paint the rails before we put it on and uh, I used the leak stopper. It's in a gallon, but I wouldn't do that uh, again. I would just paint it with a regular couple coats of black paint because you'll see on the corrugated panels, I got that goopy black mess on everything, on my shirt, my pants. Um, I'm going to seal the rest of it after I get the walls insulated and then use that leak stopper, the whole floor walls and, and everything. What's up next is put the plywood sheathing across above the doors right here where I'll put the vents, get that done, do the front. I'm leaving the, the back side, the doors off for a reason because of heat and uh, it's still hot here in Tennessee. And then what I will do, that'll give me plenty of, of air while I'm insulating and then putting the plywood sheathing on the inside. Here's the outside. Once again, I am not a professional builder. Uh, I didn't get real straight lines with the screws, as you can tell, and um, but anyway, it's coming together. Stay tuned and we'll get some more done on a, this solar kiln. I've got the camera down here. It's this uh, barn cat that comes out to visit me every time. So we got this uh, barn cat and he's fallen in love with, I guess, with, with me coming out here. We call him CC, construction cat. For the lack of a better name but uh, anyway pretty sweet kitty there you go fixing my tripod <laughs> um, anyway welcome back getting the remnants of the hurricane that come out of Louisiana and everything is so wet it's supposed to rain some more today been quite the headache and slowing down progress I decided to consolidate all my logs the two piles there are pine logs getting them up off of the wet soaked growing mold growing mushrooms ground and the update on the, the solar kiln, I have it boxed in. Wanted to start painting the outside, but all of the rain and the wind blowing sideways, everything has gotten wet. So in the log yard, the consolidation, you may have seen it. Um, I had these posts, they're seven by seven posts, 14 and a half feet long. You can see that they just barely fit inside of this solar kiln. I'm going to go to the sod log pile and get out, I need 22 by fours, eight feet long. They don't necessarily have to be eight feet long, but uh, that will be for the doors. There's the overhead of the vents. Immediately when I got this done, we were having to catch butterflies and get them out. So it become quite the butterfly trap. So going to the barn, the hay barn. Now those big posts, I need to mill a couple more of those and they'll be the upright posts where I'm going to come out. If you recall from a previous video, I'm going to build a side shed right here that I can take and park the uh, sawmill under 
and I think I'm going to run about a 20 foot span, haven't quite figured that out yet, but go the length of the side of the barn, move the gate, move the fence, scoot it over um, to the left. That is a, trying to think, that's a 12 foot gate. So I'm going to come out at least 12 feet. Enough of those pine logs, I can cut rafter boards 14 and a half feet long, so maybe come out 14 feet but I need to get started on that pretty soon. On the trailer is some sod lumber, rough sod, and um, that's what I'm gonna start digging out from for the uh, framing of the door on the solar kiln, keeping in mind that it is, the solar kiln is 16 foot wide, the posts are six inches, so I'm looking right at 15 foot gap for the doors for the framing. So I'm thinking seven and a half feet uh, will be each door. So seven and a half. And I've got some ideas for hinges, how to uh, install that. I need to be mindful of, I uh, finish the outside. I'll do the insulation on the inside, cover that with plywood, paint everything. But you can see at the end of the house is the electrical box and that's where my electricity is going to come from. So I'll go ahead and start making the holes on the side of that for all of the conduit for the electrical wiring. I still need to make the baffle on the inside and get four, I think I'm going to go with thermostatically controlled attic fans for the movement of air inside of the, the solar kiln. So. Anyway, thanks for staying tuned and watching, and I'm going to start digging out my 2x4s next to build the door. So I'm out looking through my lumber pile here. It's a little less than 4 inches on my 2x4s, so I'm an inch and a half wide, and I'm using dimensional lumber for the solar kiln. So we're right at three and seven eighths. So what I'll do is go to the sawmill and um, resaw this, put this so I get it down to three and a half inches. But that's what I'm doing right now, sorting through. And I've already made mention that I need 22 by fours. These are. right at 93 inches so seven feet nine inches i need several several one two three four i need four of them that will be seven feet six inches so i'll be, pick the best ones and then the others on the door build will be I think right around six foot, six and a half feet. Anyway, I'll give you the dimensions as I start building the door on each one, but it's going to take 10 two by fours per door. And it's gonna take some ends and pieces for the vents that you just saw in the top portion of the solar kiln. I have four more vents that will go into the door. So let me get back to, uh, restacking for the sawmill for a resaw job on these new two by fours and this is pine that was probably milled two months ago it's been uh, sitting stacked with stickers and drying some of the first ones that i started milling And what I had was a bunch of pine two by, it was two by threes and two by twos that I just put on my table saw and sawed th these little strips from, from the table saw to make my first stickers. All my new stickers are off of sawn logs that were oak and they are, uh, what are they? I think they're one by one. Yeah, it's uh, one by one. It was some oak logs from the uh, 
Tennessee tornadoes that were given to me out of Clarksville, but uh, I, I made them one by one and cut them to length of 40 inches. I think the reason I did 40 inches, yeah, the forks on my tractor here are, uh, they're actually 39 inches, but I made them 40 inches and it works well with my trailer that I have wood on currently. I don't know if you can see this. Look like it's a little brown something inside of them. I don't know if they've hatched out already because then the next thing I see, it almost looks like bug droppings. And there's a spider. I can see daylight underneath it right here. And so it's got a, a, a little hump right here. And if I take a, a, a quarter of an inch, it's right at four inches. Take a quarter inch off that way and then flip it over, take a quarter inch off that way. I should have a good squared up two by four. If you all have any recommendations for a planer, leave it in the comments below. And uh, of course, I, I've watched some videos on Grizzly and the DeWalt, and I'm um, not sure which direction I should go in. On this log, of course, there was a, there's a lot of knots in it. A lot of, of course, you see the mold. I can still feel the, the pitch in it. Eleven and a half inches by inch and a half. I think I'll go ahead and saw up some of these for two by fours. Here's something you need to see. Inside this hay barn is where I had these two by fours or uh, two by threes and two by twos stored. And the carpenter bees got into chewing holes in there. But to give you, let me get a little closer. When I saw this in half, then you can see the kind of tunnels. Let's see. So they were chewing through here, climbing up in the wood and you can see the cavity of where they were living. I don't think this is a nest. I think this is probably a, uh, a dirt dauber nest. But you can see why later, if you have a problem with the carpenter bees, you go ahead and fill that cavity with foam after you find them, try to kill them off, fill it with foam to keep them from coming back and doing any more damage. But anyway, thought you'd like to see that. If nothing else, it'll be good short section two by fours for framing of the door and for those vents. All this rain is sure messing me up on this build. But uh, I have one door done. I have the other framed. I'll get it hung up. Today is Thursday. I need to get this video finished so it'll be available on YouTube. For Saturday morning, uh, let's see, outside exterior is done mostly. The, the doors are hung. I chose these strap hinges. They're for gates, but because the doors are seven and a half foot wide, they are very heavy, thinking this will 
help carry the weight because next it'll be the insulating of of the inside more plywood on that and then painting it all black i don't know if i mentioned it but it's almost like a 12 by 12 pine that i had sawn i uh cut these small sections that way there's extra strength going into the corners for the hinges so that is off that ugly pine video that i made and then that's how i fastened the hinges the vent holes are ready i'm going to sign off thanks for watching hopefully hopefully we'll get a couple dry days and i'll go ahead and get this painted i think i'm going to do some kind of tin roof awning on this side to cover up so if the doors are open but also the vents up above uh, the rain comes out of the northwest a lot and i'm thinking this back side of this solar kiln is going to get a lot of water so i need to somehow divert that off of the kiln but uh, once again thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next episode